Okay, we're gonna be making a stupid little uh, GUI interface in Visual Basic to track the pillars out to get red. So this is what the final project will look like. Oh, what in the thing? Oh yeah, that's so this is what it looks like, and then um, so this is a label right here. That's another label. This is a button. That's a car reservoir. And what you what you do is you just click this, and it just rifles through and it, it doesn't actually do any tracking. It's so um, that's basically what it does. So what we need to do is you, you create a new project, um, a Windows form again, and in Visual for Visual Basic. So what we need is we need our two labels. So I'm just going to stick them on the form wherever right now. So and I'm using the default name because I don't really care, and it'll make coding and stuff easier for everyone else if anybody wants. Um, so we have our two labels, we need a button, which will be under B, and probably not below that. So we're going to put button wherever, and then we're going to progress bar. Progress bar. I'm just going to stick him on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. You're going to want to have things hanging over like that. It looks really nice and professional. Um, what else do you need? Oh, we need a timer. So the timer doesn't actually show up on the thing, but um, we need to have one because it's kind of running in the background. So now that we have all our labels and they look all silly like that, we need to uh, update all their properties. So I can't show up. So now when you select label one, you'll see it up here, and this is in the properties window. All right, and we're gonna have. We need to update this. We're gonna say pillars. Uh, I probably want to make the font bigger because it ain't good enough. So I'm gonna put this at like 24. How about that? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, this looks so jacked up. Okay. Now I'm going to have label 2, I select it and it goes updated here. So this is the actual output field. So I want to have this not too big but not too small. How about like 18? And when it's not running, it'll just say not found. Or at startup rather, it'll say not found. The next thing is we need to update our button. So you, you click on the button and then it'll show up up here. And again, we'll just going to click update this to say go. And then that's pretty much it. Now if we come back over to the form, all our little changes, I can't have it all on the screen because you can't see anything. Now if you look, this thing's all hanging off like that. You can just move it around and don't really matter. Uh, and you can't really see our progress bar because our timer's covering it up. Right right. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to start adding code, right? So if we double click on go, our button, it'll move us over to here where we actually have our code. So what we need to do is enable our timer when we click the button, right? Because that's basically the, the real enable. So enabled equals true when we click the button. That's all this does. So if you look over here it says button button.click so that's the that's the event that makes this happen. Um, okay, the next thing we need to do is we want to now our timer needs to be updated because now that's where the real meat and potatoes are happening. So, before we can start playing around with that, we need to create them variables. Whoops. Them. And I'm going to have a bunch of different fields. Now, let me pull this up here. So, this will be our first, that's our second, that's our third and that's our fourth number, right? So we need to update those all independently because we don't want <laughs> we're doing this in descending order apparently. And first and then we need a loop variable as well. And we need those declared as int. Good. So now those are all our globals I guess for this form. So M we want to count up we click go or when the timer starts. So n is n plus one, and then if n is less than 
100. The reason why we got to do this is because our progress bar will blow up if we don't. I'm going to just copy and paste this code real quick. So this is what we're going to do. So when the first is equal to our first number, our first number sequence uh, right here, that's represented by our first again. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random number. And it's going to be scaled between 1 and 255, I guess. Between 256. And we need to cast it as an integer. That's what this code's doing. And we need to do the same for the second, the third, and the fourth. The reason why we want all different statements is because we want them to be all independent. We don't want them to all look like the same thing. Right? So does that make sense? I hope it does because I can't hear you. Uh, label 2 is now was what we called label 2 is this thing. So we need to update all these fields that we've been generating. So we're going to call text equals and then we want the first number, right? And then following that we want a little period, right? Can you see that? Again, I can't hear you. But we need to concatenate that period on with this little ampersand like that. That's another concatenation symbol. And then we're going to type in second another concatenation symbol, we need another period, concatenate that with third, concatenate that with period, concatenate that with fourth. And that's, now you, it's real tempting to want to put in a semicolon, but that ain't right. Okay, and now, so this was, this now creates our full uh, label. Uh, it'll update all the text in there, okay? But the thing is, we also have a progress bar we cannot forget about. The progress bar one was the name that we gave it, or that it gave by default. So I'm just going to say, I want its value equal to m. Right? So m is our loop variable. So when this hits 100, we want we don't want to update that more. Okay, so that's, that's basically it. Now, we need an else statement because when it gets over 100, we need to do something. And what that what we're going to do is we want, first of all, we want to make sure that our label is finishes on a, a valid address because m many of those might not even be sensible. Um, and then we also want to take our timer. Turn it off, and then I guess we can reset in zero sequence again. And that—that that was really quick, man. Okay, so let's make sure this puppy works. Start bug right Hey, and it worked. All right, it looks nice and shitty. That's how you know it works. And you click go, and it rifles through. And that, my friends, is how you make a really crappy GUI interface in a Visual Basic track. A, a killer that I did there. Oh, that should be possessive. Oh, man, I'm going to get an email out on the internet. Well, that's it for today. Thanks.